Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for standing by and welcome to Visual BI's webinar. Due to popular demand, Visual BI is back with the answer to the most frequently asked question, which self-service BI and analytics data discovery tool is the best? During the presentation, all participants will be in listen-only mode. If you have a question during the presentation, please submit it via the Q&A portion of the screen. Simply type your question into the box and click the send button. Our presenter will address questions at the end of the presentation, time permitting. If you don't hear an answer to your question today, don't worry, we will deliver answers to you individually after the webinar. The webinar is being recorded and a link to the replay will be sent to you via email. Presenting today are Gopal Krishnamurthy and Varun Anand. Gopal Krishnamurthy is the CEO of Visual BI Solutions, a firm he founded in 2010 to transform the field of enterprise business intelligence and analytics. Varun Anand is a senior BI consultant with Visual BI Solutions. His credentials include being certified in the implementation of Microsoft Power BI and Tableau. He is a consultant, blogger, and a subject matter expert in the field of BI and data analytics. I will now turn the presentation over to Kapal. Thank you, Darby. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for joining. And we have over 1,500 registrants for the webinar. Today, I wanted to start off with the usual disclaimer, but I wanted to also add that, you know, we have Visual BI has put in a lot of effort to make sure the content is accurate, but I wanted to share with you that with the rapid release cycles of all the major BI and analytics vendors, a lot of the things that we state uh, could change with uh, time. So we wanted to uh, take that into consideration. And if you find any inaccuracies, please report back and we would correct that. That said, I wanted to start off with the webinar agenda today. We will first introduce Visual BI to you and then go down to the self-service BI tools introduction. We will then move on to the deep dive and comparison and then the evaluation criteria based on data acquisition, data visualization, data collaboration, then focus a little bit on SAP integration, then pricing and licensing. We will then try to summarize based on strengths, limitations, and then also share a new decision tree based on help you navigate the multiple BI tools. We have also added a very new section called the Visual BI Wisdoms, where we will share some of the, the challenges and the thought process that goes behind taking, helping you take a decision. With that, I will let me have the pleasure of introducing Visual BI to you. A lot of you have uh, known Visual BI in uh, several forms of BI and analytics needs. Our claim to fame has been um, in the visualization space and the Visual BI extension space, but I wanted to share with you, Visual BI has more than 100 large Fortune 500 companies in the portfolio where we provide strategical consulting services all the way to the training on uh, various BI products. We also have several new software products in our portfolio now. One of them is Value Driver Tree for advanced dynamic planning and simulations. We also will have our new VBI View, which helps you consolidate multiple BI platforms into a single portal, which I will be sharing at the end. And we also wanted to share that a lot of our customers, more than 100 of them in various form shape like you know, some are our software customers, some are our training customers. All of them have contributed to the deep expertise that Visual BI has built over the years to be able to share this webinar with you with a lot of uh, on the ground findings of how a tool evaluation should be conducted. I also wanted to share the depth and breadth of our consulting services expertise to software products to our training but I also wanted to share a little bit of a tidbit today that you know we may be called the Visual BI, but very few 
realize that most of our revenue actually comes from a lot of non visualization related activities that we should be it's when i share this most are shocked maybe because our we are called visual bi but it is extremely important to this webinar because we bring all that expertise you know from microsoft uh, you know we we do a lot with cloud migrations microsoft azure and power bi and you know we have implemented tableau for a lot of our customers spotfire so and then most importantly the data integration bbw or hana or bpc or even data services and eam all that plays into how your data warehousing strategy impacts your self service bi strategy going on i wanted to talk uh, move on to the the topic of the day today the self service bi tool evaluation and i I know we keep saying the devil is in the details and the details do matter, but I do wanted to start off by saying we have picked that six tools for evaluation and but one of the most challenging uh, thing is, you know, we always hear about apples to oranges. We consistently hear, you know, IT talking about data governance and only using live connections whereas business want agile data preparations and they are okay with imported spreadsheet data and then the tool evaluations happen most of the time on the business wishes on how pretty something is based simply on spreadsheets uh, based import so i just wanted to start off by making everyone to ponder that's going to be the theme of our webinar today and to help you you know evaluate in an appropriate manner one of the things that i also wanted to talk about is before we as we go deeper i wanted to introduce about a lot of the different terminologies that you constantly hear all that impacts you know uh, you know we talk about data sources you know some are extremely concerned about very good uh, both uh, sql based data warehouses and volap based data warehouses some are extremely concerned about oh, hey does it connect to hadoop spark and big data data sources what about no sql what about social media data sources so that's why next step would be the data acquisition you know we have imported mode we have live mode and then when it comes to data preparations you have wrangling cleansing all of this invariably in some form or shape mean the same thing but i wanted to tell you even when it talk visualization you have your charts you have your maps even your tables and cross tabs and then you have your live connection imported data offline data and then uh, some may say you know our data is in memory so all of them play an important role in helping you make this evaluation so we thought we would start off by introducing this and one of the things that we added today is we wanted to introduce to you the top 30 or so bi tools and uh, analytics products that is out there that are actually uh, meaningful contenders to participate in a, in a major evaluation for all companies uh, for this webinar we have introduced you know last year we ran uh, a webinar with uh, Lumira Analytics Cloud and Power BI and Lumi, uh, Lumi, uh, Tableau. And by popular demand, everyone reached out to us and said, hey, can you add Click and uh, Spotfire to it? To today, this year, we have added that. But also, we wanted to share with you, there are a lot of other worthy contenders that are out there. And we wanted to show by the history of the evolution of various BI products and when it got launched. And I wanted you to pay a close attention to the, the ones highlighted in the light green at this section here. I will probably come back to it at the end, what these mean. And there is a common similarity to the ones that are introduced in 2014 onwards. And that is going to be the final uh, point that I would harp on. So that said. Let's get to the introduction and offerings of the tools that we are going to talk today. You know, when it comes to SAP, we have Lumira Discovery, that was SAP's go-to uh, offering product until uh, February 7th of uh, this year, 2018. But uh, I think we will touch on that. And Analytics Cloud is going to be the SAP's go-forward product for self-service BI uh, strategy. But we thought it makes sense to compare because one of the common questions we hear from customers is, 
hey how does analytics cloud compare to uh, the rest of the market but also to lumira discovery so we have uh, shared that and one of the key difference uh, is going to be that analytics cloud is the pure play cloud only uh, uh, option compared to lumira discovery which is a desktop based uh, tool now when it comes to power bi even though it's somewhat introduced only around 2014 using a lot of the microsoft's uh, you know power pivot and a lot of the offerings that it had it has really taken the self service bi world by uh, somewhat of a, uh, i would say taken a leadership position primarily because of the free desktop offering and the office 365 integration providing easy access to a lot of the enterprise customers tableau has uh, from 2013, they have, even though Click and Spotfire have been in the market uh, at least a good five years before Tableau, Tableau has definitely taken the the lead, uh, and it's a it's a very strong contender in uh, with its uh, offerings. We will look at it in more detail. Both Click and Spotfire, when we look at it, they have managed to stay relevant, and then uh, you know customers speak very whoever used them speak very highly of them. So we wanted to include those two all tools and then compare so let's start off by uh, talking about tableau and uh, tableau as you can see uh, we made an effort recently uh, i think uh, in the month of april they introduced uh, tableau uh, prep we try to include that if you look at it you have the tableau desktop you have the tableau online and then you have the tableau server and Tableau also is giving you flexible deployment of uh, options of on-prem, cloud, hosted. And one of the key things that I wanted to uh, mention is you also have a Tableau reader and Tableau public. Along with that, Tableau has created an excellent community. So if you even go to the schools and uh, universities, Tableau is one of the very popular tools because of the community they have built. and then. We have also talking about some of the pricing options, and I believe Tableau revised its pricing in the month of April. So I want you to pay a close attention to, you know, the Tableau desktop, which is the full featured along with the Tableau prep is going to be your most expensive offering at about $70 per user per month. And the Tableau Explorer, somebody that could use the Tableau, uh, whatever has been you created by the creator plus also do a little bit more in terms of exploration is that depending on whether you are a fully hosted like a, a private cloud or like a, a you know you know the first option it is 35 bucks a month or 42 bucks a month and then you also have a simple viewer people are just simply consuming the information that is something created by the tableau creator it's only 12 bucks a month Now let's take a uh, moment to introduce Click to you. Now Click has two major offerings. One is Click View and one is ClickSense. For all practical purposes, we will be comparing ClickSense to Tableau because ClickSense is the more uh, modern uh, or recent release and most of the customers, even Click is pushing ClickSense as their go-to offering. The big, when somebody asks, hey, can you compare Click View to ClickSense? It's a very simple thing. It's ClickSense is more self-service, desktop-based, more modern, uh, agile data discovery tool. Whereas think of ClickView as more of your dashboard and guided analytics. Maybe an IT or a power user builds it and then they share it. So similar to Lumira Discovery and Lumira Designer in, in that aspect. But for all practical purposes, this webinar will compare ClickSense to compare to the major offerings. Again, uh, Click is also having a, a click platform they are also recently announced in the uh, click connect their own uh, little hub they also have uh, the end printing they have the click uh, cloud clink sense cloud and it is somewhat very competitively priced and they also have something very clever called a token based pricing so sometimes they will charge you only for the consumption of the token not like a per user so ClickSense has a little bit of uh, creativity around their pricing model. That is something to keep in mind. Coming down to Spotfire, uh, a lot of uh, you may not know, Spotfire has a lot of the rich 
data preparations and advanced analytical capabilities and they also have a uh, very robust location analytics capability so in terms of uh, sheer features you know spotfire is a fairly a rich platform so when you look at it i think even spotfire has beefed up a lot of their pricing offerings they have they were seen as one of the most pricey obviously because they have a lot of features and functionalities so if you look at it even with the updated pricing spotfire you would see it as uh, their analyst pricing is like at 125 dollars a month it's it's probably the priciest of all the products out there but uh, they will tell you that uh, it has a lot of different deployment options it's more enterprise grade so something to keep in mind as you are evaluating um, the products the power bi uh, you know kudos to microsoft you know uh, despite being somewhat of a late entrant to the self service bi uh, field they have definitely taken a um, lot of enterprises by simply uh, i would say uh, getting uh, the right word would be almost sneaking in through office 365 with a powerful uh, free power bi desktop which is basically fully featured you know no limitation that, uh, and then provides pretty good connectivity and then has with the rapid releases i would almost say that with the monthly releases they have caught up quite a bit uh, and uh, something that is uh, something uh, i would say with a very good partner network microsoft is uh, has boosted up uh, their offerings quite a bit there are some interesting items like the gateways and the uh, report server they all play a key role but for most of you something to keep in mind is yes power bi desktop is uh free it's uh, it's it's pretty good but the moment you want to share with someone in your organization the pricing switches to nine dollars 99 or uh, 10 bucks a month for all practical purposes it still will be perceived as a low cost uh, option and then obviously when you go to a more of a consumption model like a per node like large enterprises obviously some customers do say with an enterprise agreement the pricing is different again I, I i request you to check it out with your microsoft rep but most see microsoft as a lower cost but then also fairly feature rich option that's out there in the marketplace coming down one of the things is uh, you know how robust uh power bi is and or you know how uh, one of the things that i wanted to introduce is you know visual bi has been actively uh implementing for some of our customers that are uh, extremely keen on moving their data to azure data lake in microsoft azure which is becoming very very popular and i wanted to just share uh, uh because of confidentiality reason uh, i'm not able to share the customer but i can tell you that it's a, a fortune 50 customer we have had tremendous success with moving a lot of their data to Azure Data Lake and using Power BI to drive a lot of uh, business user excitement and adoption. So if you are uh, really wondering how good is it, you know, you know, uh, we are happy to share this uh, customer reference and something that you should talk and uh, uh, find out if it is something viable for you also. Moving on. Uh, to SAP, I wanted to start off by uh, introducing SAP Lumira. Some of you have implemented, some of you were already won the license, but haven't implemented. Some of you were thinking of implementing. So it makes sense to start off. And, uh, you know, Lumira itself, you know, there is a standard edition, but it doesn't let you really give you any mobile access or a, the ability to share, but it is like a Lumira desktop. Think of it, there is one standalone lower priced version available to you, but then, when you are looking at enterprise, you have discovery, which is more for self-service, data prep, visualization, storyboarding, and then you can use your existing business objects platform to share the content. So the key advantage would be a lot of SAP customers already have a business objects landscape, which means you don't have to build another server uh, landscape. So discovery was seen as a go-to product and designer was being used most mostly for doing it authored or power user authored enterprise level complex dashboards and application so designer and discovery were supposed to kind of 
interoperate and drive adoption within SAP customers in terms of visualization. But on February 7th, SAP made a major announcement in redoing their BI strategy. And it makes sense to talk about it now where SAP had a challenge of having a lot of different options for discovery. So it had its business objects explorer, it had the Rome BI, it had Lumira discovery, and it had analysis for all up. SAP made an announcement that they will continue to consolidate all those use cases into their SAP Analytics Cloud offering, and all of the innovation will focus around SAP Analytics Cloud. Your Webies and Crystals and Analysis for Office, and even your Design Studio or the SAP Lumira Designer will continue to stay as is and perform the use cases of your dashboards, your uh, web application designer, your uh, reports use cases. One thing I wanted to share with you is, uh, six years is a long time in BI, so I thought it makes sense to talk about discovery because I know some of the customers have already owned the licenses, they have gone about already implementing. I just wanted you to feel reassured that SAP will continue to support it and uh, you can buy time as you slowly transition into analytics cloud which i will take a little bit of time to introduce to you that so i would uh, strongly encourage uh, you to see that discovery and designer can kind of coexist as a companion and there is still some use cases left for discovery but we are not going to recommend anybody starting out with discovery at this point of time so let me take the pleasure of introducing Analytics Cloud as the last one because it is the, with the new SAP announcement, there is a lot of buzz. We have had a lot of inquiries about, hey, can we do a proof of concept for Analytics Cloud? How does it compare? And it is the SAP's go-to offering. And there is an, a definitive reason why SAP is placing all its egg on Analytics Cloud as their go-to offering because they are trying to build an integrated BI platform all in the cloud with you know, BI planning, predictive, all consolidated into a single platform. And also they will be introducing the app building with a little more scripting capabilities later this year. They also have an analytics hub to integrate uh, your on-premise business objects uh, data assets to the cloud data assets. And one of the things that I wanted to share with you is the key thing about analytics cloud is it's pure cloud which means there is no real desktop uh, offering it's all designed for the where the future is headed it's all going to be in the cloud and they are going bidding on analytics cloud in a full cloud online mode so if i look closely at the offerings you know just like you have Azure and Power BI, you have SAP Cloud Platform where you could actually use it as a way to do the data warehousing in the cloud and then use SAP Analytics Cloud as your data visualization cloud. So think of if you go to even S4 Public Cloud, then SAP Analytics Cloud could be one of your reporting offering. SAP Analytics Cloud has its own mobile offering itself. So it has its own mobile client and with all the responsive pages and then you also have a very unique of all the products about called digital boardroom, something that is very cool. Wherever you go to a conference, you would uh, see that. When we dig a little deeper um, into the, the pricing model, you have a BI module that is $24 a user. And then you also have a very comprehensive planning, uh, which is at a higher price of $157 per user per month, but then you end up getting the planning model, the, 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 the value driver tree simulations, a lot of some of the advanced capabilities that are fairly unique to SAP. You also have a free 30 day trial to check it out. So for all those, you know, uh, absolutely, we strongly recommend that you should try it out. Since a lot of you have reached out to us about analytics cloud, hey, can we try it out or something? I wanted to share uh, this particular case study where we, in fact, implemented um, January through March of last year. So this customer has been live with Analytics Cloud, KMG Chemicals, uh, for well over a year. 
In fact, uh, we will be speaking at Sapphire this year in Orlando, and I would like to welcome you all to here. And in case you want to talk to the customer directly, we can arrange. So, you know, you can see for yourself uh, how, because, you know, a lot of customers are anxious about trying to go to the cloud or, hey, how, how new is Analytics Cloud? I just wanted to tell you it's more than two years old. We have few customers already on um, uh, in production and successfully using it and happy to make that introduction. So let's get down to the evaluation criteria and the definition. You probably have seen this slide uh, on our prior webinars and the blogs, and we have introduced how everyone should look at and evaluate self-service BI. You know, you have the data part of it where you have the acquire and the prepare. You have the visualizations where you have the visualization components, you have the exploration components. But what, when we look at the market from last year to this year, I think more and more customers are looking for advanced capabilities. That is the big change in the market. So when I say advanced, a lot of the enhancing features like ability to script, ability to integrate with planning data so that they can do actuals to budget, and uh, natural language processing, voice recognition, some machine learning capability, integration to Python and R, and ability to bring in some custom extension features, some of the you know, automation uh, and then the embedded BI. So these are some of the things that we start hearing from customers who are demanding more from the self-service BI and analytics tools. So we thought we would add and then try to bring that into the evaluation criteria. Then obviously then you have the collaboration because you can have a great tool, but if you cannot share and collaborate with your peers, uh it, it's it's it just remains as a desktop offering so that's why you know collaboration and sharing is also equally important so let's uh we are going to go deeper into each of the section and compare the tools so we will start off by going to the data acquisition part of the self-service bi so when we look at uh, data acquisition it all starts with data sources you know you need to be able to connect to enterprise level uh, data sources. And uh, Discovery uh, was making some progress uh, with about uh, 60 plus data sources, had a reasonably good connectivity compared to the competition when it came to HANA, BW, or Universe. It also supported custom data extension. But when we switch over to Analytics Cloud, what we feel is Analytics Cloud has actually caught up and in fact much richer connectivity than Lumira Discovery at this point. It can connect to flat files, it can connect to on-prem, BW, HANA and Universe, even though Analytics Cloud is in the cloud and they have this cool hybrid BI functionality. And most importantly, it can connect to a lot of the SAP's cloud applications natively like uh, Concur, SuccessFactors or even S4 Cloud or Ariba and a lot of that. That, that is natively built in. And I think that is going to be the strength of Analytics Cloud compared to the rest of the tools. Microsoft Power BI, it provides the best connectivity to Microsoft-based data sources, Azure later uh, lakes. It also has an extensive list of connectors uh, also. And uh, you will probably need to scale up from Power BI desktop to Power BI service and enterprise gateway if you want to really build out your enterprise data source connectivity. Tableau has more than 100 different uh, data sources when it comes to connectivity. It provides both live and acquired mode. And I think that is a big strength for Tableau because they're able to operate exactly the same way in both and live and acquired mode is actually a key strength of Tableau. And some of the scenarios heavily relies on the Tableau extracts using the hyper functionality. I think that is, uh, it's it's a strength of and weakness of Tableau. And uh, Click the same way. Click is also very, fairly very rich and it has a lot of uh, ability to uh, acquire the data through uh, Click connectors. And it has a very, very powerful in-memory engine. Um, I would almost say Click's strength is, you know, acquiring the data and almost put it to the in-memory engine compared to live connectivity. So one of the the key thing is uh, in an acquired mode, click is fairly very, very strong in terms of 
data sources compared to a live mode. Spotfire also has very wide range of connectivities. It has 40 plus data sources, has the ODBC, JDBC connectivity big, and also has robust statistical data analysis connectors as well. So let's uh, look at uh, the key features and try to really um, uh, look at it very closely. You know, customers want to quickly import your uh, Salesforce data, Twitter, Facebook, and we try to uh, try to put a, a little bit of a ranking so that we can provide a meaningful recommendation. And one thing, uh, the theme of the the webinar would be you can clearly see how uh, some of the tools, you know. Click and uh, Spotfire have been in the market longer, but Tableau and Power BI are not far behind. But when you look at it fairly closely, Analytics Cloud is actually slightly uh, better than Discovery. And maybe with the Sapphire coming next month and there will be a new release and then SAP may probably fill some of these uh, gaps and then Power BI will have a, their next monthly release. So this is a constantly evolving uh, thing, but most importantly for you uh, attendees, pay attention to the way to evaluate. So rather than whether it is it can do today or uh, tomorrow, it's because tomorrow the gap could be fulfilled, but more I would like you to focus on some of the things that you should consider and how to evaluate. And when you have to make a decision, evaluate at that time. So, uh wanted to get dig deeper into sap connectivity primarily you may think you know we, we we do talk quite a bit about sap primarily because uh uh pretty much all of our customers have sap erp and they are an sap customer so we wanted to make sure we are catering to a lot of our customers our prospects and then we are bringing some practical uh experience on the ground but at the same time, we are also catering to the whole BI market in terms of you know, uh, uh, comparing. So one of the things is, how does it connect to HANA? How does it connect to BW? So if you pay a close attention, um, actually, uh, one of the uh, most of the tools when it connects to HANA, it's, it's somewhat fairly close in the assessment. What we feel one of the drawbacks right now is Analytics Cloud does not support a HANA imported mode. It, it will connect to HANA live, but it won't like whereas the other tools can do. And uh, that is a, a little bit of a, a, a drop for Analytics Cloud right now. But if you look at the connectivity to BW, both Analytics Cloud and Discovery provide native connectivity, and that is their biggest strengths. And uh, if you look at the rest of the tools, you know, both on the BW Live and BW Import, you are subject to a lot of limitations, which is something we will cover at the end, why you run into a lot of the limitations. Similarly, on Bob J Universes, both uh, Analytics Cloud and Discovery is able to connect to a Bob J universe, whereas the rest of the tool, they cannot natively connect. I'm sure there are workarounds. Uh, I believe there are third party extensions out there that allow you to connect uh, to a Bob J universe. And I think that semantic layer access is natively uh, not available to the third party tools. Let's uh, move on to data preparation. So when we look at uh, the data preparation and uh, some of the key uh, modeling capabilities, because I think in a self-service world, the business would like agile data preparation and they don't want to go through a big data warehousing project to see the, uh, make a nice visualization or get the immediate. So they are uh, like, okay, let me connect and then let me blend and then let me get something done quickly. So when we look at some of the the capabilities that they are looking for, you know, they would like to append, they would like to merge, they would like to do custom calculations, they would like to add geo coordinates and look at it. So, and then there are a lot of advanced things like, what if they want to do large data extracts? So if I, when we look at it, uh, Spotfire is the probably the most strongest tool and uh, Tableau and Click are, uh, not too far behind and then power bi is very close now as it stands uh analytics cloud and discovery are probably 
on par and maybe even discovery is stronger right now on the data preparation right now but i we hope uh with time uh either uh, other vendors move further ahead or sap catches up with them but this is where uh, it stands when we compare the tools let's move on to data visualization so we are going to uh basically not uh, force rank anyone simply in this section there are a lot of uh, workarounds for pretty much all of the vendors like you have custom extensions what from a, a evaluation perspective you only considered if you can create a particular chart type simply either out of the box or if you have to do a workaround you can do a workaround so if you can do it through a y extension we did not consider we still so so that it gives a fair evaluation to uh, all the vendors so if you look at it uh, uh, very closely i mean there are obviously you know one vendor has one chart more than the other or something but i would rather look at it does all the tools have all the most commonly used visualization i don't think so there is a whole lot of uh, to be very honest with you there is a, not a whole lot of gap but if we have to pick one i would say tableau is probably the richest in terms of the number of visualization but like i said it shouldn't be the parameter so you should take a look at it i'm or am i even going to use a particular visualization just because it is missing so they stop using the tool that shouldn't be the the case so it just gives you drives awareness of where we are um i have moved on to the maps now and i just thought uh it's extremely important the concept of location uh, analyzer location analysis seeing things on a data on uh, and a map is getting more and more prominent and when we deep dive into the mapping capabilities of uh, all of the tools one thing that uh, very clearly stands out is you know people say you know tableau is the gold standard for visualization we could almost say spotfire is uh, the leader in terms of geo mapping capability and tableau has caught up quite nicely there and click is not too far behind and uh, power bi is you know you know uh, consistently improving but not quite there yet and sap is definitely lagging in this area in terms of uh, competing in terms of overall mapping uh, capabilities let's uh, move on to the data collaboration so this is becoming more and more uh, prominent uh, in organization because you know it's uh, as you uh, can imagine more and more and uh, you know there is always somebody building the content and then they would like to share with everybody so this is a big make or break component in in the assessment so one of the things is the how robust is the chat uh, the the server can i chat with my uh, can i comment can i share it in a pdf can i export it into powerpoint pdf all of that factors were considered to making an evaluation and can we have given you the key summary and uh, one of the things that i would like to uh, uh, share with you is you know microsoft uh, being part of office 365 this is where they really really shine it's very easy to export to excel and powerpoint and all of that because it's natively microsofts but a lot of customers uh, still complain that oh tableau i can only export a csv i can't do it as excel or i don't have an export to powerpoint so even though you could see how uh, customers could nitpick just on uh, the collaboration feature so i just thought i wanted to share with you how uh, the sharing and collaboration can also uh, make or break uh, a tool assessment but one thing i wanted to also share with you is if you really have mac as your corporate standard you know only tableau desktop works on mac right now so i think that is a clear strength to tableau right now but if you are focused primarily on export to excel ppt and pdf obviously microsoft and uh, click and tableau i mean spotfire shine so i just want you to you know be aware that this is where uh, some of the uh, the tools shine one of the things that more and more modern tools they expect the ability to kind of chat and interact you know that's becoming very very common in enterprises so if you see discovery did not have that component whereas analytics cloud 
does have the chatting but whereas it's not in power bi but it's there in tableau so that's something to uh, highlight and differentiate and spotfire also has the chanting component to it this is a yeah yeah new section we added this year because mobile has become extremely um uh critical and a commonly asked feature and uh, we had request to evaluate this as a separate section so what we uh try to uh make it easy for all you all okay do i have a mobile app for android do i have an app for windows you know obviously uh ios is very common and you have everyone available in ios but you know if somebody says i want it on an android your choices immediately narrow down if somebody says i want it on all form windows your choices narrow down to only power bi and you can say you know there are customers that say you know i want it only on phone not on tablet then automatically your choices keep narrowing down and then if customers are expecting a more enterprise grade security like you know ability to remote wipe ability to have a touch id authentication and i think customers are getting more and more uh, demanding about the ability to push alerts based on event uh, you know if sales go up or down or some some event happens they want to be able to do push notification the ability to email annotate a, look at a dashboard or a storyboard quickly annotate on a mobile device and then quickly email across all that are becoming key uh, features and clearly microsoft power bi stands out uh, across all the uh, vendors and uh, something that you you should uh, uh, keep uh, you know it was it's a no brainer on mobile uh, let's uh, switch over to security and uh, data governance and uh, you know uh, sap and microsoft are somewhat very uh, robust because of uh, their enterprise credentials and uh, you know they they all support sso and then they have uh, analytics cloud you know you will have to do the role based security within the uh, the tool uh, it's not your so bip uh, for lumira discovery for microsoft power bi you can just link it to your office 365 and then you uh, you can configure the sso but you still have to configure a gateway if you want to do a data refresh so the same thing there is not really uh, uh, much to differentiate between tableau uh, click and spotfire usually you know customers uh, have a little bit of a challenge when you they try to set up uh, sso between uh, a, a tableau click and spotfire in a microsoft environment or thing so this is one area to caution again something people uh, all the vendors have somewhat matured uh, on providing the saml authentication and providing sso they are supported but the amount of effort it takes to actually implement will vary so something that to keep in mind uh, i would like to revisit pricing and li licensing and provide a little bit of a summary here so you could uh, see you know uh, the discovery and analytics cloud are free for 30 days uh, one of the the drawbacks of sap is they do not have a free offering um, unlike power bi or clicksense uh, even tableau has a free offering uh, your tableau public and reader are free and then there is a tableau public and then the tableau desktop is free pretty much if you connect to a spreadsheet i think because of that a lot of the schools and universities the adoption of those tools are a lot higher but when it comes to sap they they see more as an enterprise so you almost have to purchase so that's why the adoption of sap is restricted to sap customers or you know more on an enterprise setting um let's focus on analytics cloud i think one of the key thing i wanted to uh, share with customers is watch out for uh, you know uh, sap's announcement at sapphire on uh, some of the cpu based licensing model or the cloud extension policies again we don't have any information but something i, 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 I we think uh, something to watch out for and see uh, uh, if uh, how the enterprising uh, pricing is going to work for analytics cloud and a lot of the customers who own business objects you know the discovery because of the the, the server component you already own you know it's something that to keep in consideration so again uh, you want to keep in mind all of these tools have 
multiple different offerings, multiple different deployment offerings, and the pricing will change accordingly. So it's not like, oh, Microsoft is 10 bucks a month and Tableau is 35 bucks a month or Click is 15 bucks a month. You can't, uh, you know, I will go back to the apples to oranges comparison. You got to see the deployment option. Uh, is it per user? So a lot of the things, factors play into that. Uh, we wanted to kind of come back a little bit and uh, provide a little more uh, deeper insights to the SAP integration because that is a commonly uh, uh, requested questions to Visual BI about the, their challenges or how to make it work or they would like to know better. So we thought uh, we will uh, try to summarize uh, this here for you all and how each of the tools uh, connect. Like I mentioned, when it comes to HANA, the, the key major difference is Analytics Cloud connects on a live mode and there is no data preparation modeling option for it. Now, the philosophy is more, you should do all the data modeling right inside your data warehouse in the HANA and you don't have to do any kind of a data preparation, more of a data governance philosophy. So that's why you will see a difference in how SAP connects to HANA. Whereas in Power BI, Tableau, you know, you can acquire, you can import, and uh, you don't really uh, have any limitations on the data preparations. So I wanted to touch before I go to the BW, a uh, lot of customers have expressed frustrations, uh, you know, connecting to BW. So one of the, the primary uh, uh, reason why is SAP tools, connect using a connectivity method called BICS and whereas non-SAP tools use the OLEDB or the MDX way of connecting. So because of the fundamental difference, there are some uh, limitations that third-party tools have. You know, they have a limited hierarchy support, user exits are not fully supported. Uh, you probably run into some challenges uh, on live connections, your currency unit of, you may be able to do it, but you know, we request you to read the fine print of each of the vendors uh, on limitations. And, you know, you go to Tableau, click, all of them have stated the limitations that uh, you will have when you connect to BW. So that said, we have tried to kind of help you uh, document uh, some of the things, you know, Power BI, uh, everyone uh, says, oh, it connects to BW, but in our findings, uh, you know, it's probably, it's a still uh, a raw and it is evolving. It's not a very, very mature as it stands. So, uh, so it's something to keep in mind. And if you are in analytics cloud, you have to keep your current BW version in mind. It apparently, uh, it connects only at 7.3 and above. So you just want to watch out for the compatible versions. So one of the things that I would like to add on today is also uh, when we go to B4HANA, uh, the way the data gets exposed is through SQL. So uh, some of you have uh, asked, uh, is it any different from uh, BW751 HANA to B4HANA from in our, it is somewhat inconclusive, but I something to watch out for, but I, something that we wanted to share that the way the tools will connect in B4HANA is different. Uh, we are not in a position to conclusively say how much different it will be from if you are on a BW75 or HANA versus B4HANA. Universes. I know a lot of you have had uh, frustrations uh, that there is no real uh, universe connectivity. Um, to the third party tools and it is a fa fact all the tools uh, have challenges uh, outside of SAP to connect to a re able to reuse your semantic layer uh, business objects universes only Lumira discovery and analytics cloud are able to connect natively. I don't think so this is going to ever go away it will stay this way and uh, uh, you know some desperate customers have resorted to third party extensions and acquired mode and all that stuff but something to keep in mind.
Coming down to the conclusion, uh, the most inter interesting part of an evaluation uh, of the webinar. So one of the things that uh, let's talk about uh, the strengths uh, before we talk about uh, the weaknesses of uh, each of the tools, because one of the things that uh, we see that is every tool is stronger in their turf. That's the key message we would like to deliver. So if you take a look at uh, discovery, uh, the interoperability with the Lumira designer or design studio is a unique use case. And it's also a strength where, you know, business could build a rapid story, uh, storyboard and IT could actually uh, uh, kind of polish it. Uh, and a uh, lot of the use cases and the uh, scenarios that come with it. Uh, Lumira discovery has an SDK component to be able to do custom visualization. The BW and the HANA connectivity is uh, richer and the ability to maximize your business objects investments because a lot of customers have large business objects investments and then the ability to use a uh, discovery um, and reuse the platform is a uh, it's one of its uh, strengths now when it comes to analytics cloud one of the biggest strength is trying to integrate planning use cases predictive use cases and ba use cases all in the cloud and i think uh, the way the intuitive collaboration and commenting is somewhat very modern. Again, SAP is offering subscription based uh, pricing, but something I wanted to highlight is I am extremely, uh, uh, how do I put it, enthusiastic about the regular updates from SAP. In fact, even this morning, there was a latest update and we were updating our slides to see if anything changed. You know, uh, Both Microsoft Power BI and SAP Analytics Cloud are right now leaders in keeping up with release cycles and rapidly upgrading their product. Um, the digital boardroom and the pre-packaged analytic content, you know, everybody is familiar with uh, the BW business content. Now, I think they are repeating this on the front end storyboards and everything. They look very rich. I would like you to uh, check it out. And SAP also recently got their visualization IBCS uh, certified and uh, responsive UI also something you will see other vendors also catch up uh, on the IBCS certification because the IBCS standards on visualization is getting more and more popular across the world. Coming down to uh, Power BI, its greatest strength is able to uh, roll out a free desktop inside an Office 365 ecosystem. So it's able to reach a lot more users you know, a lot faster. So something uh, that is its biggest strength is able to get inside everybody's desktop and then also provide pretty much unrestricted connectivity even on a free desktop. It's its, it's biggest strength. And it's very strong on in a Microsoft ecosystem, Microsoft data sources. And I think uh, some of the NLP with Q&A features are extremely innovative and uh, their data preparation modeling is very much Excel-like. So the ease of use and the monthly updates, it's its biggest strength. Tableau, you know, we could almost say its, it's community is its biggest strength. And uh, it is at least perceived uh, because as the new breed of people that is graduating from colleges, you know, they all, uh, they pretty much everybody has tried Tableau. So it's always, has that excitement from the student community. And uh, it is almost, I would say, it's like a market leader in the data visualization space. Uh, we have to see the data preparation tool that they recently launched, how it is uh, received in the market from our initial reaction. Uh, one thing that we noticed is a lot of the Tableau and Click customers were heavily using Alteryx for the data preparation needs. So I think, uh, uh, Tableau by releasing Tableau uh, prep is trying to address uh, that gap, at least providing basic data preparation. I don't think so. It's going to provide a very advanced preparation, but at least enough that they probably can do it. Uh, the business can do it themselves. They have recently revised the pricing. They were seen as expensive uh, at, at, uh, compared to the competition. They have recently, so we just have to see how it is uh, adopted. Like I said, click uh we said it it has a free 
ClickSense desktop looks like Power BI, I, completely unrestricted. It kind of works in conjunction with ClickView. The in-memory engine is its biggest strength. And I believe ClickView has probably one of the best partners network that are able to you know, work closely with the customers and drive. And when we come to the Spotfire, Spotfire has one of the richest data preparation, data wrangling capabilities, very, very advanced in uh, statistics and predictive, uh, same thing on geo capabilities. Uh, one of the things that I would like to share is uh, Spotfire, Click or Tableau, they, they, their user base, each one of them, they will, they will stick by their tool. Uh, that is how uh, passionate about uh, uh, their, their tools. Let's uh, touch on uh, uh, the weaknesses. Um, you know, the obviously everybody is aware. Uh, you know, the discovery lacked uh, connectivity with non-SAP data sources. Its data preparation options for live connections was not that uh, really uh, extensive. The mobile capabilities were also uh, not enhanced. And then the recent announcement almost uh, dampens any excitement somebody would have for discovery so we should then just simply uh i would uh, almost say i i don't see us covering discovery in our next uh, year's webinar but i do wanted to share for the customers that are using because there is still uh, enough life with discovery so let's coming to analytics cloud there is a limitation when you acquire uh, the extract size that is i hope you know sap addresses that Today, there are no really data modeling, data prep with live connections. I think that is seen as a big drawback. And uh, the ability to uh, consume uh, an inherit a folder structure from SAP BIP, that is business objects platform, the interoperability, customers are ex expecting it, but I think SAP is still working on it. And the biggest drawback and the strength is there is no desktop. Uh, tool compared to all the other uh, vendors here. It's a pure cloud and uh, the predictive capabilities are also seen somewhat uh, basic at this point of time. Uh, Power BI, uh, like, like uh, one of the things is uh, the constant uh, information we hear is the two things that really let it down is DAX scripting. That can get complicated if you want to really go from basic uh, storyboards and basic dashboards to do much more richer and complex you know that DAX scripting can be in intimidating for business users it definitely has an in the most inferior connectivity to bw of all the vendors uh, uh, like uh, tableau click or spotfire out there so something to keep in mind but within a microsoft environment or if your data is in azure you know microsoft power bi really shines tableau you know, people still, uh, we have to see how, but pricing people see relatively in today's days and time, it's pricing is seen expensive. And uh, some charts are not available out of the box and you have just have to do workarounds. And uh, customers do complain about data duplication, the dependency on the data extracts for better performance. You know, uh, large enterprise customers see that as a, yeah, as a negative point. And then uh, lack of Excel and PowerPoint output. Yes, obviously you can get an CSV output, but uh, customers still demand a formatted Excel and PowerPoint output. Coming down to Click, uh, I think there is still a confusion in the marketplace about a transition from Click View to ClickSense. And uh, ClickSense is uh, fairly very weak on mobile. And one of the things is uh, I wanted to share is Customers do complain that uh, if you duplicate the data, ClickSense is uh, competitive. But if you don't duplicate the data, if you are on a live scenario, it's it's actually a weaker uh, contender. Spotfire is has a lot of complex features, uh, but it is seen as most expensive, and uh, it is uh, somewhat. Uh, uh, how do I put it? It's definitely uh, has a barrier to entry because it is seen expensive compared to a Tableau or a ClickSense or a Power BI. Uh, 
you almost need to be in an enterprise world to get an entry into uh, Spotfire. So I think that the barrier to get introduced to Spotfire is not bringing in a new user base to Spotfire, but it definitely has, it doesn't have that ecosystem to keep uh, enhancing the tool further. I'm very pleased to share because you know we discussed a lot uh, and I wanted to share, we put together a, a, a decision tree so that it helps uh, you all navigate some of the, the stuff. I don't want, uh, since the uh, webinar uh, slides are going to be shared everything, I don't want to spend more time as we are already close to the hour. I just wanted to uh, briefly touch on um, how you can help you know if you want to just be a desktop user or just you know mobile some of our recommendation again these are just our recommendation if you see any inaccuracies you know let us know we will fix it but something that we thought how do we concise the whole webinar into a single uh, diagram uh, this is it so one of the things that we added is some of the the key wisdoms are some of the things that I would like you to keep in mind when you are doing a, a self-service BI strategy and assessment. If you look at large enterprises, you have information consumers and then you have business users who are who demand self-service BI. But when you actually take account, you know, 80% are just, they just consume information and only 20% of them are, you know, they want to get access to the data, they want to write reports, they, you know, power users want to do both. And then you have these advanced data scientists. But if you really look at it, even outside the, outside of the 20%, you know, the, you know, we have given you an indicative spread, not everyone needs data scientist capabilities, but, one of the things that uh, you have to, you need to take stock of how many consumers, how many uh, self-service BI user, and then what kind of user persona to be able to properly procure licenses and properly determine the your tool strategy. So this is the first step towards coming up with the right strategy. The second one, extremely important, make your mind whether you want to have a strategy for the data warehouse or you want to have the strategy for the tool. Most companies have multiple data warehouses and data lakes, multiple BI visualization tool. And one of the recommendation we would like to share is you have to think about consolidating and streamlining your data sources for better outcomes. Otherwise, you know, this webinar will be the most popular webinar ever and we will be running this pretty much every year because, and we don't see that changing also because you have moving parts on both sides, both on the data side and on the tool side. We are in 2018 and Excel still rules. And most of the assessments are done with spreadsheet data. So one of the strong recommendation we would like to propose is, you know, you should try before you buy, but you know, if, if the policy prevents, you know, buy just enough licenses, you don't have to buy for the whole company, buy just enough to test drive for all user types and data sources. So you do not have a bias remorse or a strategy remorse, like six months later, oh, we made a bad decision. The fourth one, uh, it's extremely uh, important point is what we find in most enterprises is we go to the sales, they love click. And then you go to finance, they are heavy Excel users, they love analysis for office, and they won't go to click. And then you go to marketing, they are, you know, they are not going to switch from Tableau that they have been using, it's extremely personal. So one of the things, the key message I would like to share at you is, you know, just because it worked for a company X, does not mean it will work for your company. You know, you can look at a case study, you can look at it, it's extremely personal at a company level, at a department level on what would work for them. The other important point is I want to take you all through uh, a little bit of a history. If you look at the BA and visualization market, if you look at the history, 
you know, 20 years back, it's all your Cognos, Web Focus, and Crystal reports, and the formatted reports. And then the world moved to, oh, we want to do self-service reporting, ad hoc reporting. You know, you had your desktop intelligence, maybe. And I think Click uh, pioneered in bringing in performance by doing in, in memory visualization. And then Spotfire went one up on trying to really focus on visual analytics. And then Tableau really, uh, took it one step further with self-service and agile visualization. And then guess what, you know, Microsoft Power BI came along and then said, you know, the BI should be in cloud. And then they bundled with Azure and Power BI. And one of the things that we wanted to tell you, I think where the world is headed in 2025, I want you to keep in mind, one of the things that I showed you on the very first slide on the BI tools and contenders, in the last three years, all the big major vendors, IBM, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, SAP, Oracle, all of their offerings are cloud-based, including even Salesforce. So they are all cloud platforms. They are all trying to provide an integrated BI. So it's still, we don't know who will be the leader in 2025, but I just wanted to put a foot on thought on something where the market is evolving to. So one of the things based on whatever you have seen, I think it's not bad if you have a, you have multiple BI platforms and it's going to get extremely common in large enterprises. But one of the recommendations we would like to make is at least you can make sure you don't have more BI license than your number of employees. We have seen cases where a company has 5,000 employees, but then they have 10,000 self-service BI licenses. So something that, you know, you can take easily eliminate the self the shelfware, you know, focus on, you know, you can have multiple BI pl platforms, but you can eliminate the redundant reports, provide an easy access, e I'll, I'll provide a smart search, and then drive adoption by understanding your users and their usage. So, one of the things that uh, I introduced at the beginning is, you know, Visual BI has uh, launched uh, a product because you are going to see the need for a, a common hub or a common gateway to all your BI content. Our product provides an auto sync and I would like to uh, encourage you to uh, try the product because the multiple BI platforms are going to be the norm in the future. So one of the things uh, customers have reached out to us, oh, I didn't see web focus in this. I didn't see MicroStrategy in this. Absolutely, you know, with the, the amount of real estate we have, you know, we couldn't, but one of the things, if anybody, you know, we had over 1,500 registrants for this webinar, reach us out. We can customize this presentation to your scenario. Uh, we can provide a tailored uh, presentation and a tailored strategy advice to your your data scenarios and your user thing. Uh, last but not the least, uh, you know, uh, I was supported by uh, a, a great team. You know, we put in uh, well over 120 days to, uh, you know, do a fact finding and uh, do the research. Uh, one of the things we also did is we made sure we brought respective specialist for each of the tools uh, so that we we are able to provide an unbiased factual uh, statements here but still i wanted to thank each one of them to make sure they uh, they are appreciated for the contribution to the community uh, with this webinar that said i wanted to go to q a but since we are already over the time i'm probably going to try to see if we can take few questions yes uh, there were quite a uh, few questions on will the decks be shared will the recording be shared absolutely uh, we will be uh, sharing that okay i think some of the questions we already addressed Okay, so one of the questions is, we were informed last week by our account manager that Lumira Designer is all now also going to moving to the cloud on the same timelines as Discovery. No, I think that is not a true statement. And if you look at uh, 
the designer functionality an app design module is going to come but uh, if you look at uh, excel chess if you look at web application designer if you look at the sap's roadmap they are all going to lumira designer which means you need a way to migrate your web application designer and excel chess and your enterprise applications use cases and we sap has made a clear statement that lumira designer will be continue to get invested and you have a clear roadmap till 2020 yes you will see you will see some uh, design capabilities in the cloud doesn't mean lumira designer is going along with discovery i think that is not a correct statement uh, so one of the question is what is the cost of sunsetting lumira and onboarding analytics cloud Again, I think this is uh, uh, something that you should uh, discuss with your AE. I believe SAP uh, is working on a hybrid licensing model where you could do a cloud extension with uh, trading your Lumira licenses. Again, I don't know the facts. I strongly encourage you to talk to the rep. Uh, I don't want you to assume anything. Uh, are there any issues with data protection and privacy especially in analytics cloud this is a big concern for hospital industry again this is something we think the the uh, sap analytics cloud if you look at the market a lot of the major vendors are focusing on rolling out their bi platform in the cloud so i don't think so i think it is an industry concern not just an sap concern and we do believe that will get addressed And one of the question is, can SAC use a Bex query as a data source? Uh, absolutely, you can use a Bex query as a data source. It is available already. I think there is a lot of questions. I apologize, uh, considering the time, and we are already, you know, I know even though we scheduled for 75 minutes, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to reach each each one of you. Uh, uh personally and we will try to respond to the questions that concludes the webinar today and i wanted to thank you all uh for joining